Peter Capelli is a professor of management at the Wharton School of Business in Philadelphia. He contributed to a 30-year study of the career paths of a thousand high-level executives published in the latest issue of the Harvard Business Review. And he joins us from Denver. Peter, good morning. Good morning, guys. First of all, Peter, what was the study trying to look for here? You know, these jobs are really important. They uh, affect lots and lots of people who work at these places. They're role models for other people. They end up being the people who run boards of directors of museums and charitable groups. So, you know, the people who get these jobs, it matters a lot. And we wanted to see if it had changed a lot over time, who's getting the top jobs. Well, you mentioned who's getting the top jobs. So let's talk about that. A lot of people are saying it's women and it's foreign born executives. Why the change? Yeah, well, for women, it's quite a remarkable move. In 1980, there were no women in the top 10 executives in the Fortune 100, so zero, right? Uh, and now it's up to about 17%, and it, it grew in 2001, so it's been on a pretty rapid pace up. And the other interesting thing about this is those women in the top jobs got there faster than their male counterparts. So it's a big move. It's a really big change and one of the biggest stories um, you know, in, in careers. Similarly about foreign executives, used to be about only a handful, maybe 2% of the top executives were foreign born or foreign educated, uh, and now it's about 11%. So these are big, big changes. Why is that happening, Peter? Well, I think for women, uh, there are two explanations, and they could both be true. And one is that, uh, you know, we know in most companies they have a problem getting women from the lower management ranks into the middle management ranks, a lot of women drop out. Um, but those who survive and get through the middle, maybe they're just better, right? They're well suited to the environment, they work harder. Uh, and so the fact that they're getting to the top jobs faster once they get to the middle means they're just better. Uh, but another thing, and this is probably true in some companies as well, is that the folks at the top are really doing things to help them. They want the company's leadership to look like their client base, to look like the population. So they're you know, they're really doing some things to, to help them. Um, I think on the foreign born, maybe a different story. You know, the U.S. population now is about 12% foreign born. Uh, but I think the big thing is U.S. corporations, the big ones, used to be in the business of sending their talent to the rest of the world. They operated around the world. And the big thing was to take American executives, make them expats, send them around the world. And now these other countries are develop, have been developing their own leaders and they're pulling them back into the U.S. now. So, you know, there are companies like Pepsi where the majority of the leadership team is foreign born now. You know, you mentioned women and I think of GM and I think of Mary Barra, what's happening with her. But she was in the company for 33 years and you guys found in the study that the majority of people who rise to the top are now moving from company to company. They don't stay in the company and work their way up. Why the change yep. there? Uh, you know, I think it's a really interesting question and one of the biggest developments. It used to be in companies like this that people made it uh, to the top from within and now they seem to hop around a lot more. And I think the reason has to do with uh, lack of patience on the part of the companies at the very top. Um, and I think this, some of it's a grass is greener sense, but I think the idea that we want to be a different kind of company, we want to change quickly, so therefore we go outside and grab our talent from someplace else. Uh, you know, that seems to be the, the dominant model. It started a while ago, and you could see the decline over time, even in these big old companies where lifetime careers we thought still were going on, uh, for the folks at the very top, maybe not. But Peter, there's still some companies like Chevron, 90% come from within. Uh, but then on the other hand, you have places like Bank of America where nobody started their career there. Peter, one thing I found really interesting in the study was that for a time you saw a, a de decline in the age of these executives. They were getting younger. But yep. then in the recession, all of a sudden that stopped and turned around again. Why did you think that happened? Yeah, I, I think the reason for that, I think that's temporary. You know, when business is going down, uh, you don't want to change your captain, right? Uh, you're in sort of crisis mode, survival mode. And you could see that in other data. When you look at CEO turnover, it really dropped like crazy beginning in the recession. So my guess is that that is temporary. My sense is that executives will continue to get younger and there will be more hopping around uh, as soon as the economy begins to pick up again. Well, Peter, the favorite, my favorite thing you said is women are doing better. Peter Capelli yeah, in Denver. Right, yeah. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you.